Hello again, welcome back. Uh, this week I've been thinking about container ships and uh, mainly about container ship fires because we had a couple of big ones in January. Uh, there was the Antian Express had a fire in a container stack in the Atlantic um, and even a couple of weeks later as I speak now um, it's still under tow on the way to the Bahamas. And then right at the end of January uh, APL Vancouver uh, had a fire in the container stack uh, off Vietnam. Uh, it's too early to tell um, what it was that caused those fires, but clearly it's something flammable. Um, they wouldn't catch fire otherwise. And that does tend to be a problem with container ship fires. Um, it's, it's hard to find out. And the people who know, the owners, the cargo owners, the cargo owners, the insurers, uh, aren't telling. There was, you'll remember, a spate of fires involving calcium hypochlorite 10 or 12, 15 years ago probably by now. Um, and one of the things that the lines did was get together and form the cargo incident notification system so that they could share information when particular cargoes were causing problems. The latest uh, container ship fire to uh, cause regulatory change of course, was the MSC Flaminia, which had a major fire in 2012. Um, and it was traced to two tanks of divinyl benzene, which had been put in the wrong place in the hole. That's still going through appeal in the courts in the States, um, but it's apparent that the courts so far are taking the approach that it was the duty of the consignor and the freight forwarder, in this case the, the tank operator, um, to make information available to the shipper, to the ship owner. Sorry. Since then, new regulations have come in. They're in the IMDG code. They're in the other modal regulations. In fact, they're not yet in 49 CFR, and I'm not entirely sure why. Um, but they are causing a few problems for shippers. Um, the SINs and the International Group of P&I Clubs and TT Club published some guidance um, and recommended, in fact, that divinyl benzene be carried either in drums in reefer containers or in refrigerated tanks. Uh, ITCO, the International Tank Container Organisation, is working on some similar guidance, I understand, uh, specific to tank containers but addressing the broader issue of polymerising substances. The one thing that has emerged from all this is the, the importance of the information uh, particularly about the nature and timing of any stabilizers used, inhibitors, say, uh, used uh, in the product, uh, or the temperature at which it needs to be kept. It's not clear how best to um, pass that information down the supply chain. The safety data sheet isn't the place for it. Uh, the dangerous goods declaration may be. But anything that relies on IT systems um, is, is a weak point because they can't all cope with the uh, nature and extent of the information um, that, that is needed. So if you're having trouble with this, do take care. Um, if you've got any ideas on how things could be improved, do let me know and maybe I'll share it in the future thoughts. But for now, thanks for watching. See you next week.